This is Twit. Sometime between last week's show and today, the folks, you know, the browser company uh, had their big event where they announced uh, three new features, all AI based for the desktop version of the browser, one of which emulates that browse for me feature you were just showing off uh, uh, with the mobile version of the, of the browser or the mobile app version. Um, and, you know, this kind of interesting ethical debate over, okay, this is really good functionality. This is what people want. I just want the answer to the question, whatever. But now we're not driving traffic to the content creator that maybe answered that question in the first place kind of a thing. So it's okay if it's a fact, you know, what day of the week is Tuesday, you know, is uh, April 13th, 1987 or whatever, you know, nobody owns that information, but um, kind of an, if, if, if people haven't seen it, I actually think the video they did was a little, I know they're trying I to couldn't make, bring you know, myself waves. to watch it. I'm as it, which it, is ironic because I'm very interested in the content. It's a little too much personality. Yeah. I think is what I'm, yeah. I, it's not my thing. I don't mean to disparage them or what they're trying to do. By the way, my website made a little appearance in there because he, the guy doing the demo, the guy, the CEO of the company, uh, showed the, my review in his browser, <laughs> you know, so, which is interesting. They never reached out to me, Dix. But um, anyway, yeah, that's that was, nice. uh, you no, know, that's, that's, nice. that's cool. No, that was cool. That was cool. Um, I, we talked about ARC already, so I think we kind of actually covered this already, but it is very interesting that this is a browser that is unlike any other browser. And now either, again, be, with great foresight or just luck, they have pivoted to AI and are integrating that into their products in also a unique way, not as kind of a tacked on thing like we see with, you know. But talk the, about uh, an industry that was begging for disruption. Yep. Everything was consolidating on Chrome, and that's not a great outcome. Well, I, so the way I would put it is, they're actually using Chromium, by the way. <laughs> so oh. um, the, 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 the way we did, but because we, we talked about this earlier in the show out of bands, so to speak, but the you could look, you could pick any browser. Okay, what is it? Opera, Vivaldi, Brave, DuckDuckGo, you know, pick your browser. It looks like every other browser. It looks like browser. You could hold up a picture of Netscape in 1996. You've got an address bar, buttons for navigation, and, you know, uh, a big space for the web page. It's, they really, browsers have not changed. And uh, you're right. I, I think the, it's not something I would have come up with independently, right? But now that I see what they're doing, you know, in a Monday morning quarterback kind of a sense, I, I agree with you 100%. Yeah, this is the, the browser. I mean, in, when Windows 7 was still an ongoing concern, Steven right. Sanofsky told me, and I probably the world, that the biggest uh, app, the most frequently used app on Windows was Chrome. And it was bigger than everything else combined. And that when you factored in all other web browsers, including Microsoft's, it was almost like the rest of the world didn't exist, that it was 10 or 15, I don't remember the exact number, but it was a really tiny percentage of app usage that wasn't web browsers. And that was part of the reason behind this web-centric Windows 8, you know, uh, get rid of the Chrome and let them show, show them the content kind of mentality. It all came up out of the web. Like, how do we leverage and, you know, Sanofsky, extend, leverage and extend and extinguish the, you know, the, the underlying technologies that we are inspired by because of what we've seen out in the world. And this is, we're talking over 10 years ago, right? It's a long time ago, but it's very interesting to move forward. I, no one has been that transparent about that kind of thing anymore at Microsoft. So we don't know what percentage of apps run on Windows today, Windows 10, Windows 11 are web browsers, nor do we know uh, which percentage are web apps. But I think kind of anecdotally, I think we can all agree that it's a huge percentage in both cases and that more and more workloads are moving to the web. We just talked about ClipChamp as a kind of a, not a goofy version, but a really approachable uh, video editing app that is a web app, which is, it's a crazy combination of capabilities, right? Um, so the notion that we, may, maybe we should pay a little bit more attention to this thing. I mean, even something like Chrome OS, where you can kind of look at this and say, wow, I mean, this company made a, an OS, a lightweight OS and, you know, Linux really, whatever, but a lightweight OS built around the browser. Sounds like a, I'm a hammer, so everything's a nail kind of a deal because the, you know they're all web-based there. But at the end of the day, that thing is very familiar as a web browser, right? It's still, it's just a web browser. I, I, I think the central genius we'll see of Arc is similar. We, we had this conversation, Rich, so I'm sorry. I'm just kind of catching up because I think yeah, you yeah, appreciate yeah. this. Is very much like what Microsoft did with Windows Phone 7, where they really looked at this thing and said, everyone's doing this. 
but let's actually think about this and not just do something different for the sake of something doing something different, but actually try to make something that's better. Well, and, and everybody else has gone towards the Windows Phone design, right? I mean, at the time well, when Windows course. Phone was new, I mean, skeuomorphic yeah. was the thing. And they, right. you know, for better or worse, and you can point who is Belfiore or anybody else. It's like, who sort of said, eventually this seems silly. And you I, go look, for these simpler uh, I, Material design at Google is the next two generations of Metro. There, I mean, you can say whatever you want, and I, I know that guy came from Palm originally, and but that that's the that's the lineage. There's no doubt about it. And so, as a fan of this now dead platform, does this give me a little sense of peace or happiness? No, I hate it. But but that's the reality. I, I just I just think it's fascinating that something as mature as a web browser, something that's so important, like literally, arguably more important than anything else. <laughs> you know, a computer or even a phone, even, although I know apps are huge, whatever, but uh, those apps, I mean, other than the artificial restrictions that Apple has put in place, which overflows into Android because Android and Google would have gone in this web app direction, but they, you know, people want to make apps that run everywhere. So they use cross-platform Flutter, right. whatever. Instead, um, I, I think it already would have taken over the world, you know? So here's this little company. It's, I don't know, six, eight people or something. It's tiny. And um, they're thinking differently uh, about this. And not just, like I said, not just different to be different, but like, no. let's step through this. Like, how can we make this better? And, you know, there are complexities to it. That was one of the things I talked about. Well, and, but, and like, you know, one of the things is Chromeless, which is hilarious yeah, considering the name. I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. But I remember when Chrome came out as the less Chromed browser yes. compared to IE. Yep. That's right. I mean, honestly, so. Because I've been writing about this security stuff lately, I have a uh, Chrome, actually it's this computer. This computer, I actually, no it isn't, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter. I have Chrome configured as my default browser, but also my default for other things. I'm using the Google password manager. I'm just trying to understand these configurations and um, you know, compared to Edge, uh, Google Chrome is like a bicycle compared to like a 757 cockpit or whatever. Yeah. It, 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 it's not, there's some stuff, but, it's not overwrought, um, but yeah, there's a lot of still stuff. pretty I mean, cluttered. Then you sit and look at Ark, and it's a different league again, right? Oh, it's a different. Oh my God, it's but from a different planet. I mean, the, the thing that frustrates me about this whole thing is this could have been Edge. Yeah, this sh this was Edge. That was the promise. That was one of the points. Right? I would say Edge. <laughs> you know, Google obviously added function. Okay, they they. Whether you consider that bloat or not, I, you know, we can debate, but um, um, one, one, one person's functionality is another person's bloat, right? Like it's a natural iteration as we yeah. keep adding features and this is so bigger diversity um, and, and can never take anything out. You I did a, uh, a set of uh, over, over the course of three or four years, did uh, two um, studies about Microsoft's signature PC program. And the key takeaway was that nine out of 10 people agreed that a clean minimalist computer with no bloatware or crapware was ideal. And that the other 10, the other, you know, one out of 10 was this guy saying, I, I just like more stuff. <laughs> I just, the more stuff, the better. Yeah. Well, and uh, then you go okay. look at word and say, like, how many more stuff people do you have? I know. I know. <laughs> I, the, so it, look, there's something for everyone. We are also, I, not to keep recapping the show for you, I'm sorry, but yeah, you know, we were, in, in the, in the discussion of web browsers, I mean, it came up like Vivaldi is an example of a product that I, I, you know, it's fine and can be configured in a way that is pretty ideal, but it's also very complex because there's so much stuff. And I think it just appeals to a certain type of person where someone like me might look at, you know, brave, which doesn't do almost any UI work. In fact, in the past uh, week or two, they, they, this, there's a small visual change to the way that pin tabs appear now. And it's, I have to tell you, it's a little off-putting to me because like, the UI never changes. And I'm like, oh, well, what's that about? You know, what are they doing there? And, you know, like, I, every, you know, there's something for everyone, right? So, yeah, you're right. You, you're, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. There you go. Hey, it's me, Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Windows Weekly. If you want to see more and want to catch the whole show, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast client or visit our website, twit.tv slash WW. And of course, there's links right below me.